He was a soldier, he was a shepherd, he was a beggar and a king, he was a farmer, gleeman, sailor, carpenter. He was born, lived, and died Aio. He died mad, he died rotting, he died of sickness, accident, age. He was executed, and multitudes cheered his death. He proclaimed himself the dragon reborn, and flung his banner across the sky. He ran from the power and hid, he lived and died, never knowing. He held off the madness and the sickness for years. He succumbed between two winters. Sometimes rain came and looked at him from the two rivers, alone or with those of his friends who would survive winter night. Sometimes she did not. Sometimes other Aes Sedai came for him. Sometimes Red Aja. Egwene married him. Egwene, stern-faced and stole of the Armland seat, led Aes Sedai who gentled him. Egwene, with tears in her eyes, plunged a dagger into his heart and he thanked her as he died. He loved other women, married other women. Elaine and Min, and the woman he had never seen before, he lived those lives a hundred lives more. So many he could not count them, and at the end of every life, as he lay dying, as he drew his final breath, a voice whispered in his ear, I have won again, Luz Theron. So I just finished The Great Hunt, and I got some thoughts. Uh, like the first book, uh, this only took me under a week to finish, so I went again, loose Theron. <laughs> uh, first off, I want to say that, yeah, Jordan is definitely doing his own thing here. Uh, for those who thought Eye of the World, <clears throat> like myself, was a little too much of uh, Tolkien's greatest hits, you don't got to worry about that here. <laughs> This book, this book goes so far off the reservation of usual fantasy tropes that I'm honestly I'm really excited at this point. So I mean, gosh, where to begin? I mean, that last act was just so just crazy, crazy good that I'm just kind of out of it trying to remember what happened before that. I said in my last video for Eye of the World that I was excited to learn more about the Aes Sedai. Well, I got that. Uh, and at first, I got so much of it that I was thinking, uh, can we get back to Matt and Rand and Perrin now? Uh, not that it was bad. It was just uh, glacially slow at the beginning. It was kind of like um, not fun Hogwarts, I guess you say. <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of new characters, more prophecies again, uh, about three dozen new characters, and then we got the classes. Uh, for the Aes Sedai with all these different colors and, and yeah you, you needed a flow chart to remember you know what class has what beliefs like uh, for example the Red Aja are a group of Aes Sedai who focus on capturing and uh, and gentling men I guess it's kind of like what they say is a it's kind of like a nice word for neutering them <laughs> uh, neutering their magic powers so they can't you know they can't channel anymore because they want to prevent another breaking of the world like in the Eye of the World prologue then you got the green Aja, which are known for battling. Uh, the brown Aja are basically librarians, you know, that are magic. And, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, we do find that the Moraine is a blue Aja in this one. Not that I can remember what the blue Aja is known for or uh, really what their abilities are. But um, you get the point. So you're given this caste system within this system. And it, it, you got to learn that along with a new about a dozen new Aes Sedai characters. And it's just a lot at the beginning, kind of like the last book was. So um, you can see where I was kind of like, okay, uh, I, I know I asked for this, but I'd like to get back to Rand and Company now. So let's get back to Rand and Company. They uh, they get a visit from the Omerlin seat, which is basically the head of the Aes Sedai, the head of the order. Uh, she informs him that he is indeed the Dragon Reborn. Sorry, I've got an itch on my face. <laughs> I can't make it stop. Um, most of this book is is Rand trying to either deny that he's the Dragon Reborn or just kind of run away from it, which makes sense. I mean, that's about how a, a young man would handle this kind of news. That You know, you went from just being this little sheep herder to, hey, by the way, the entire weight of the world is on your shoulders. Don't blow it. Uh, you only get a few short bits about Lan teaching him how to sword fight, but uh, it's stuck in my mind. There's a big payoff for it later. Uh, long story short, there's this this Horn of Valir that they found at the end of the uh, the, the last book. Uh, that gets stolen, and there's a, a, a small group that goes out to try to get it back. Uh, this is where the characters split up and things kind of get crazy. Because again, I think this is the point where Jordan says, 
I'm taking this story in a way that no one saw coming. Um, the part that gets uh, to, to go find the horn, they kind of get separated, or so you think. Rand, Loyal, and this new character named Huron, who has a really cool ability, apparently. He can smell evil. Uh, that's an interesting little little thing there. Uh, they find themselves in what appears to be kind of like an alternate dimension or something. Uh, like Always. Always when you're recording. Always. Uh, they find themselves in like a parallel dimension or something where it, it's like the same world, but bad things have happened in it. Like in this one, they can see where uh, the, the the dark friends have kind of like taken over. They've, they've won the important battles in this world. It's, it's a really nice Stephen King multiverse kind of feel to it. So uh, I was obviously already into that. But they meet this lady there named Celine. And she's supposed to just be like insanely beautiful. Like they, every paragraph Jordan has to tell us is how is the most beautiful woman that Rand and the other guys have ever seen in their life. And, you know, if she, she's just supposed to be this insanely beautiful to the reader and you're just sitting there like, okay, this lady's totally Satan, right? Because Rand being a teenage boy around this smoking hot woman, and he's going to do what any boy would do in that place and pretty much do anything that she asks. And he does that. And sometimes it's just like, yeah, I don't think that this helpless woman that they you found in this void is going to be like, oh, well, I need you to do this and that. And yeah, use your power. And I know you want glory. And it's... It, <laughs> It turns out that he used some kind of portal stone to get them where they are, and she urges him to use his ability to get out and get back to the regular world. I don't know if she was stuck there, and she needed him to help her find a way out. I'm interested to see where that character goes. I'm pretty sure that she's going to show up again. I'll get to that later in my final thoughts. Um, But this whole portal stone thing, kind of like the ways, but I feel like this kind of unlocked the fast travel option for the character so I don't have to get like 19 chapters of Matt and Rand singing and juggling so I'm always on board for that and, and unlike the ways it isn't is it really uh scary I guess um I forget what the thing is called in the ways it apparently is very very scary uh, so that's always good Perrin Perrin keeps kind of honing his little wolf skills here and uh I think he's able to speak to other wolves now telepathically like he's able to ask them you know where are the dark friends where are the evil ones um I'm still not clear really, on Perrin. I, I'm sure we're going to get more development as that goes on. Uh, Tom is still alive, just like I said. Uh, just like I guess. He uh, he did decline from traveling with the boys, though. So um, uh, that that was kind of a bummer, but it was good to know that he's still alive. I hope he's still a big character. And I guess it is, because you get your first POV chapter with him, and you find out that he's like this crazy ninja assassin or something like that, because these thugs killed uh, his girlfriend. And that's that's an interesting development. Apparently, he's just like throwing daggers like it's no big deal. Um, yeah, really interesting. I knew he was more than just a gleeman, but uh, I never expected this. So looking forward uh, to that. Uh, what else? In the end, I guess the, the group gets, they, they, they get the horn back. Long story short, they get the horn back. Uh, Padden Fane is the one who had stolen the horn, and he, he lets Rand know that this isn't over, and he's going to meet him in Edmonds Field one day. Uh, Egwene and Nynaeve, they're undergoing their Aes Sedai training for most of this book. That's why I said it's kind of the Hogwarts thing. And uh, Nynaeve undergoes a test to go straight from being a novice to what they call the Accepted, which is the final step before you become Aes Sedai, I believe. I might be incorrect on that. I'm still I'm still learning the, the, the hierarchy here. But uh, it has these like trippy tests where you have to go through like these three barriers. And it shows you like this future that you realities that was or, or, or what could be. I'm still quite uncertain. It was a very, very interesting chapter, though. But one of her visions, it's just, it's heartbreaking because it's it, she sees this future that her and Lan could have had together and their kids and stuff. And it's something they always say, you know, be steadfast, you know, be able to walk away and, and realize that this is just a vision that it isn't real. And she has to walk away from pretty much everything that she probably wants at this point. That was really rough. Uh, I was not expecting that. She, uh, it, it gave me a little more insight into Nynaeve that I was that I was hoping to get from the last book because she did seem quite steely in the last book. So, uh, yeah, I appreciated appreciate that story. But the girls end up getting betrayed by Leandrin. Leandrin, I believe her name was Leandrin. Uh, she's secretly one of these Black Aja, which no one thought was real. They're basically the Aes Sedai that that serve the uh, the Dark Friends. They're a uh, Oh, God, what were they called in Harry Potter? Death Eaters? <laughs> Death Adders? I can't even remember. Uh, they end up in Falma with, with Min and Elaine. 
Uh, Gwen gets the worst of this, though, because she's, uh, she's basically like sold into slavery. She has to wear like this collar with a chain. Uh, I think it's called Damani. So much, so much terminology in here. And uh, yeah, she just she has to undergo some bad, bad stuff. These people known as the Sanchan are basically keeping slaves of anyone who can channel. It's 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 some dark stuff. And I mean, Egwene goes through some hell in this book. Uh, Rand and the rest of the group they kind of they finally get up into the same spot. So we got all of our characters kind of back in the same place in Falmy, and that's where this book just hits another level because it's kind of. Take it or leave it for me at this point. Uh, good chapter, okay chapter, whatever chapter at this point. But this, about the final 200 pages of this, this thing is amazing. I cannot put it down. Uh, Rand has to fight a Blade Master, and he does it without channeling. If this was a normal fantasy book, this would have been the moment when he embraced his ability to channel, and he would have used it to fight this guy. Uh, it's a really, really awesome fight. Uh, Matt gets the, the Ruby Hilda knife back. And this book goes kind of horror show at this point when he gets... I mean, everybody said that, oh, this is really a PG, PG-13 story. It may not be Game of Thrones, but, dude, this this is some dark stuff. He, like, he cuts this guy's hand with, with the dagger. And he basically turns into, like, a two-week past ripe avocado and just, like, just... Oh, like, his eyes are popping out and stuff. It's crazy. So I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, and then Matt... Matt ends up blowing the the Horn of Valyr and summoning the army of Ar- Archer Hawkwing, which is just like what? And they mow down they mow down the Sanchan. It's kind of like uh, the the paths of the dead in Lord of the Rings when Aragorn shows up with the army of the dead. That's sorry for the Lord of the Rings parallels, but I'm going to keep doing that because that's all I have to relate it to here. Uh, you, you get another battle between Rand and Balzaman again, and I believe something about it's like broadcast across the sky. Like, everyone can see it. I don't know if it's like a giant vision in the sky. I, I'm not really sure, but but Ram beats him again. And like the last time, I didn't see a body. So I'm going to assume that Balzaman is still alive. But uh, in the ending, we get to see that Ram uh, finally accepts that he is indeed the Dragon Reborn. Uh, so like I did with the last video, I'm going to kind of list the major characters here and talk about what I liked or didn't like. Uh, Rand, I... Uh, I love the portal stone thing uh, when he's trying to use it and he sees like these hundreds of lives that he has lived or could live. It's nothing short of amazing. Uh, and also now I'm uh, telling my six year old every time I beat him in like basketball or, or, or a board game or a video game or something. I just tell him I went again, lose there and he hates it. And it's just, it's, it's great. I love it. <laughs> uh, needless to say, he probably won't be reading this now. Uh, Matt, I'm still not sure quite why the fandom loves this guy so much. He spends most of the book just like whatever. Um, I did like that he's the one who ends up uh, sounding the horn, though. That's a nice little twist. I mean, any usual fantasy trope, it's going to be your main character. Rand's going to be the one who who sounds this horn. But uh, I'm sure that's going to have some repercussions later uh, because that's a big deal, I'm believing. Uh, Perrin, I I still like that he's growing his, his wolf abilities. I just wonder if this is something that's going to end up being a danger later. Like, is he not going to be able to control this? Is he going to go primal? Is he going to become Michael Jackson in Thriller? And go away! You know, is it going to be something like that? Uh, so, so it's interesting stuff there. Celine. I don't know if she's actually the new big bad of the story, if Balzaman is actually defeated this time. But if so, man, I'm on board with it. Uh, very, very seductive, evil feel from her, and I definitely think we're going to be seeing her again. Nynaeve, uh, last time I talked about how I feel like she's so snappy to everyone, and now that it's been established that the only way she's able to channel is when she's angry, that makes more sense now. Uh, the scene with Swan, where she is a Swan, I believe it's Swan, uh, gets her to get angry to use her powers, and she goes dark on that one lady in Falma when she's holding Egwene prisoner, and that was good stuff. That was a good moment for Nynaeve. Uh, back to Egwene. Uh, I'm curious how the whole PTSD of being this 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 Sean Chan slave. Am I, saying, I hope I'm saying Sean Sean Chan right. Uh, I, I looked in the glossary. They got a little glossary in the back of these to tell you how to pronounce stuff. And by the way, I was pronouncing a lot of names wrong before I looked at that. Uh, I, I'm curious to see how that affects her going forward. Uh, can make her, you know, she could either cower or she can turn into a bad bitch going forward. I don't know. I don't know. But I definitely think it's some development I wasn't expecting. Uh, also, um, I don't know how how big or important these visions were that Rand was seeing when he was at that portal stone. But uh, 
one of those visions, he sees Egwene as the Omerlin seat, and she has she's the one who has to kill him. And, I mean, if that's true, I think she's way more powerful than we've been led to believe yet. So I don't know how much of that is, like, what will be or what could be. Or, but obviously, if it's something that could be, well, then, wow, man, she's she's going to grow big time in the next 12 books. Uh, Moraine and Land... Uh, Land, sorry. Land is basically MIA in this book, and that made me really sad. Uh, he did give a speech to Land... And, or Land did give a speech to, to Rand in this about sheathing the sword. I just thought it was like brilliant. I actually wrote that one down. I'm going to read it. Uh, when you can't win a big victory, sheep herder, learn to settle for the small ones. If you made them think of you as something more than a farm boy who will be easy to handle, then you won a small victory. Now be quiet and listen. I've only time for one last lesson, the hardest, sheathing the sword. There will come a time when you must achieve a goal at all costs. It may come in attack or in defense, and the only way will be to allow the sword to be sheathed in your own body. You will know when it comes, sheep herder, when the price is worth the gain, and there is no other choice left to you. This is called sheathing the sword. Remember it. I love Lan. I need more of him in book three. Jordan, do you hear me? I doubt it. Uh, Ingtar. I, I figured out that Ingtar was a, a dark friend rather early. But, you know, I was still sad to see him go. Uh, I think he went out about as much like a hero as, as you could there at the end. I respect that. So it was a, a mini redemption arc for him. Uh, Viren, I expect her to be a turncoat in this story because she was like super interested in Rand's power. But I mean, it never happened. And I think I actually like her, which is probably going to come back to bite me later. Uh, again, I think I'm just, I'm still relating the Aes Sedai to the Benny Jesuit and Dune so much. So I'm just not trusting them as much as I m maybe am supposed to. I don't know. I don't know. It's still early. Uh, feels weird to say I just read 1,500 pages of, 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 of books, and I'm it's still early, but it is. I uh, think what I liked most about this book, clearly the final act. Uh, once the band is back together in Falma, it's, I mean, it's just nonstop action. Uh, the way Jordan wrote that sword fight between Ran and Turak was just incredible. He kept talking about how like it was just a dance, and the way that he explained it, that it wasn't just hack and slash. It was... It was quality stuff, man, and uh, I, I hope if they make this this TV series that that they are able to capture that as well because that was really really neat. Um, some of my criticisms, what I just liked the most, uh, probably I would have liked a lot less at the White Tower. Um, if you guys think back to Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and the part where they're taking their owls, imagine a less interesting version of that, and that's how I found a lot of the stuff in the White Tower. There's a lot of information at first, and so many of them have similar names. I kept having to refer to my my, my, my cheat sheet. Couldn't remember the, the difference between Leanne and Leandrin, and a lot of other similar names. You get the point. Um, I know it'll be important, so it, you couldn't just like skim through this or something like that. I know this stuff will be important. It's important to know all these characters. It's important to know all these casts and these colors and stuff. So uh, I might be paying more attention to it than I have to, but that's just, you know, that's where we are. Uh, also, I'm hoping this book series doesn't turn into Balzamon basically being Cobra Commander and, and being taken out by G.I. Joe at the end of each episode like he's no big deal. And then being back the next episode, like, with no explanation. I don't need that 14 times. You know, we're two for two here. If this guy's the big bad, I need to I need to have something that, that, that builds up to them not fighting at the end of every book with Rand winning. And Balzamon just being like, yeah, it's, it's cool. I'm still fine, bro. I, I don't really... I don't really I don't really know what's going on there. I don't know if he's defeating him or not. You know, now he lost his father's sword when he fought him this time. He's got the, the hair mark just like burning to his palm, which I think is one of these prophecies. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to actually like go back and read some of those prophecies from the earlier chapters now and see if there's anything that's been answered yet. Uh, for the most part, man, this book was great. Yeah, I loved it way better than the first one. Uh, I figured I'd get some emo moments from Rand as he's coming to grips with... Uh, you know, all this stuff and that, you know, uh, Tam isn't his real father and stuff like that. But aside from his shitty attitude towards Moraine, I'm not, I'm not finding too much unlikable with him at this point. Um, I got a lot of questions from the first book answered. I got a lot more, you know, raised by this one, a whole plethora of new ones. But um, I said I was only planning to stay ahead of the Amazon TV series, which is supposed to be two, two books per season. So I said, okay, I'm just going to read the first two. Uh, I don't think I can stop after how this one ended. Uh, the third act was just so good. 
I'm kind of curious about what happens next, and I don't think I can, you know, wait a year or two from now to to read it. So uh, I'll probably start Dragon Reborn on Monday. Uh, it's 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 Saturday right now. I'll probably start again on Monday, and uh, I mean, the wheel turns, and me not being able to stop is part of the pattern. <laughs>